What's up everybody, this is David Jagno, aka The Jaggernaut, and today I'm giving you my unscripted opinion on Haunted Castle Revisited. This is a remake of a Japanese arcade game called Haunted Castle. It is in the Castlevania universe, you do play as Simon Belmont, uh, but this is the first time it's been remade and, you know, remastered in glorious new detail with brand new pixel art, uh, brand new audio, a lot of the levels have been kind of remade and reshuffled and i'm going to show you a bunch of different gameplay from uh just me playing through the game while i talk about it hope you enjoy make sure you subscribe and like the video drop a comment down below let me know what other games you want to see me check out all that good stuff so i am not a castlevania expert by any means i think i've played castlevania 4 1 and 2 uh played aria of sorrow but the other games in this collection including this game i have not played at all so this is the first time i've ever played haunted castle this collection also includes all three of the ds games like portrait of ruin and order of ecclesia um i haven't played any of those i've heard they're very good so i will definitely check them out i look forward to trying them i know that they're on the shorter end for metroidvanias which is nice but yeah this one is a very linear castlevania game it's a straight just level progression go through the level fight the boss go to the next level six levels six bosses takes about an hour to play that's how long it took me on my first time going through a normal difficulty i obviously did die multiple times i saw the game over screen a few times but it's a very forgiving game in terms of castlevania standards whenever you get a game over you can restart from that exact level that you were on here you can see this is where the game starts. We got uh, the beautiful bride and groom, and the bride is then captured by Dracula. Spoiler alert, Dracula is the villain in this Castlevania game. Big surprise, I know. And this is the first level here. So I was showing you a later level earlier on, but this is the first level of the game. Uh, this is where it all starts. You're going to see me kind of getting used to the controls here because this is the very first time I had played it. And I was just kind of getting to terms with everything. Um, you can see that the game is pretty fast for a Castlevania game. I feel like Castlevania 4 and like 1 and 2, you moved a bit slower. Uh, you do not have directional control over your whip in this game. It's uh, very old school, so you just whip directly in front of you. That's it. You can't whip up in the air. Um, you have to jump and whip to hit stuff in the air. And this is what the original game looked like. So I'm going back and playing the original, which is also on the collection. This was originally an arcade game, like I said. So you can see the difference. Uh, visually, you know, it, it definitely looks a lot better. The music is much higher quality now. And I would also say that the game plays far better. You can see here, it just is a little clunky um, compared to what they've done in their remake. It's a far better game now with the remake. This original just did not feel very precise with the jumping. And I wasn't a fan of the stiff movement. It was kind of a weird juxtaposition to have kind of stiff walking animation and movement, but then very floaty jumping. It was a little odd. Um, some of the stuff is just a little weird. Like there's a lot of things in the environment that hurt you, but it's hard to tell like what is going to hurt you and what isn't. Um, you know, I, I kind of get the feeling this was definitely designed for arcade audiences where they wanted people to die often, to have to drain quarters and things like that. A lot of the games in this collection can be rewound. So if you have trouble, if you mess up or whatever, you can just rewind it. I think this is one of those, but I didn't bother doing that. I, um, despite what it looks like, I was not intentionally trying to get hit. But like I said, uh, this game is just a, I don't know, the controls were a little weird to me, especially after playing the remake. Uh, so as you can see here, Haunted Castle Revisited feels much better, plays much better, much smoother amazing soundtrack and the pixel art just superb it's some of some of the best recent pixel art i've seen in a retro game i think konami did a wonderful job kind of you know re remastering and remaking this game soundtrack's obviously incredible i i streamed the whole thing as well and while i was playing it i mean there were moments where i just wanted to pause and listen to the soundtrack uh, you do have a timer on every level so you have to get through it before the time runs out or you will die uh, but the nice thing about the way this game is structured, it's a, it's pretty forgiving, like I said, because when you do die, you just go back to that section of the level. So each stage is split into multiple levels, and when you die or get a game over, you just go back to the level of the stage that you were on. You don't have to replay the entire stage, which is great. 
And then once you do finish a stage, you can teleport to any section of any stage right from the main menu. You can just go to each boss fight. You can go to just, you know, the middle portion of a stage. You can just, you know, you can jump around and go wherever you want. So I think that's fantastic. For a game that's only around an hour long, they have some amazing quality of life improvements that just make it far more playable and easier to jump in, jump out, do what you want, and just have a good time. It's it's a fun game. Like I said, it took me an hour, give or take, um, with multiple deaths. Um, so, you know, once you know the game better, you can probably beat it much faster. Uh, this is the first boss fight at the end of stage one. Um, there's, you know, just a few moves to remember here. There's a tail whip and some like little hand slash. It uh, does spawn ads behind her that you have to take care of as well. And overall, a good fight. I liked all the boss fights. I thought they were very creative, wonderfully animated. There's a few that have a lot of pieces and parts moving um, that are like multiple sprites connected together and they just look amazing. It reminds me a, a lot of the cool 3D effects you would see in like early Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis games. Yeah, overall the boss fights though, very good. All the levels were gorgeous. I think uh, they did a really good job with this remake. It's um, it's a game I would recommend any Castlevania fan to play without a doubt. And I, I really liked the final boss fight too. I thought they did a good job with it. It is of course, like I said, Dracula, spoiler alert. But a lot of the environments in this game really look great. Uh, I think this is one of my favorite levels, stage two. It has a great variety of environments because you start above ground here with the castle in the background. And there's some nice, um, you know, added effects. Like when the skeleton dies, there's a spirit that summons up that you can go under or take out. Um, pretty much every level has bats. I think that's the case with pretty much any 2D Castlevania game. There's going to be bats everywhere. Flying enemies are always the bane of your existence in a Castlevania game. And it's no different here. Um, I do appreciate that there's not very many death pits. So that was nice. You don't accidentally fall in death pits and die very much, which is cool. Um, even when you do, it's not instant death. You just lose some health and then teleport back to the platform. So that was wonderful. I think this is probably one of the easiest Castlevania games, at least of the ones that I've played. But not in a bad way. I think it's just, it respects your time. And there's a lot of features built in that make it to where you're not really struggling to make progress. You can see that dragon flying in the background. If I remember correctly, that's the dragon at the end of the stage, or it's in one of the later stages. But I like that effect where the world feels very interconnected. Each stage feels like a progression of you getting closer to the castle, then going in through the basement, and then making your way up to the top of the castle for the final fight. You can see there the death pit when I fell in the water, I just teleported back up to the stage. Didn't lose a whole life. That was great. Yeah, now we're getting closer here. I'm not going to show the entire game, but I am going to jump around, just show different segments, different sections. And that previous level, you can tell, like, the water graphics are amazing. I'm, I'm a sucker for good 2D water effects, and this game absolutely has some excellent pixel art. There's a stage later on where the water is very shallow, so you can see a reflection of yourself. And it's just chef's kiss. Excellent, excellent, beautiful looking. Big props to them for what they did with the, with the visuals in this game. All right, now we're going to show you a little bit of the final fight here. Like I said, spoiler alert, this is Dracula at the very end. It's actually one of the easier Dracula fights that I've seen in the games that I've played. Um, this first phase is very, very easy. I mean, it's simple to get through this without even getting hit. I get a little greedy at the end, but uh, the final form was pretty wild. It only took me, I think, three tries, but it's visually stunning. I think they did an excellent job with the final form. Each of those heads has a different attack that they use. Um, there's a laser beam, the bats, there's um, you know some flames that get summoned up from the ground. And all while this is going on, you have to still try to hit that emerald to take out and actually get the win. So it's a wild, wild experience. The game's amazing though, like I said, highly recommend you check this out. Give the collection a try and thank you to Konami for the code. I appreciate it. Thank you for watching.